Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are going to continue the secret powers of the selection tool. I'm going to try and give you a few more useful tips uh, that you can use using just the selection tool in Finale. Um, now, if you remember from the first video, I showed you that you can just kind of grab a hold of any element and move it around in this manner. Uh, the, what I didn't show you is that if you hold down Shift first and grab an element, and move it in left or right, for example, it will constrain the drag of that element to the horizontal plane. You'll notice I'm trying to move it up or down. It will not move up or down, right? If I were to let all that go, press Shift, grab it again, and start my drag up or down, it's now constraining it to the vertical. See, I, can, I can't move it left or right, all right? And this will, again, this will work with pretty much any element. You know, constraining my ver drag vertically, constraining horizontally here with a cord. Uh, so that's shift drag to constrain your drag, okay? Uh, also, you can simply just select an item and use the arrow keys to fine-tune your positioning, right? And you'll see that it moves it in inc very small increments, left, right, up, or down. Um, and again, with any element, you can do that. Good way to fine-tune your positioning, okay? Another thing that you can do with any element in the score is if you right-click or option-click, to get the contextual menu, there will always be this show option. And what that is, it's doing just that. It's checked, which means that it's showing. So if you uncheck it, you'll see that it's grayed out, which means that it won't print. I have Finale set to show me um, hidden elements in this grayed out manner. And uh, so I can still see it. I know that it exists in Finale. It's just that it won't print now. And again, if you just right click and click show again, it'll, it'll, uh, it will now print. And again, you can do this with any element. You'll notice that somewhere in the contextual menu, you'll always find the show, right? And there's a shortcut for this. If you can remember it, it's, what is that? Shift, Option, Command, H, if you can remember that long uh, shortcut. But it's just easy enough to right-click and, and check or uncheck the show button, all right? Another thing I would like to show you is that if there is a way to, just from the selection tool, uh, transpose notes diatonically without having to go through the, the uh, transpose uh, utilities menu here, right? And it's really easy to do. Just select the, the passage that you want and use the numbers 6, 7, 8, and 9. And 6 will move notes down diatonically. 7 will move them up diatonically. 8 will move them down an octave. And 9 will move them up an octave, right? So it's a great way to kind of manipulate your uh, your notes really quickly without having to uh, rewrite or, or uh, use a transpose function. Um, and of course, it only works diatonically. So uh, if you need to move notes chromatically, you're going to have to do something different. Um, and yeah, for in this example, I had my alto sax two, you know, I copied from the alto sax one, but I wanted this a nice little harmony, a third below. So all you have to do is hit six twice and you've got your harmony. Really easy. Now, there's something I learned actually not too long ago myself is that if you hold down Option and use the up or down arrows, um, Finale will give you automatic cross-staff notes. So in this piano part I have written here, you notice that the left hand, uh, these last three notes are a little high for the bass clef. So if I just drag select them, hold down Option and press Up, it will cross-staff those notes to the top staff. Really handy. And same thing with the, uh, the last two notes in the right hand here. Press Option, Down, and it crosses those notes to the bottom staff. Really handy. And I actually didn't know that until uh, probably a couple years ago. Uh, so there you go. You learn something new every single day. Um, there is something I want to show you uh, w with uh, in uh, relation to layout with the selection tool. Now, the easiest way to move measures from one system to another is just select the measures with the selection tool and press the up and down arrows. So if I've got these four bars selected and I press the down arrows, it will move those bars to the to the next system. If I press the up arrow, it will move those bars to the previous system. And you don't have to have all bars selected. You can you just have to have the the one that's farthest away from the edge that you want. So I've got this bar selected and I press down and it moves those. Again, I, it doesn't matter where in the score. I've got that one selected and I press up and they all move to the left, all right? Now you notice um, that you notice this little icon here. It looks like a little lock symbol. What that means is that Finale has now locked this system with these four bars, okay? 
Um, by default, this lock, sys, uh, this lock symbol will not exist on all of your systems in Finale. And what that means is that when, it's, when systems are not locked, when the bars get filled up and there's too, much, uh, notes, too many notes for the system, it will move the, the measures from one system to the next system, you know, all the way down the line. But as you have these locks, uh, the Finale will not automatically flow the measures from one system to the next automatically, all right? Um, there is a way to quickly unlock or lock a system manually, and all you have to do is have any measure selected in the system. And you notice this lock symbol here on the right. If I have, if I press Command Shift L, it's going to unlock it. So now, if I fill up these bars here and it's too much for the system, Finale will kick kick the extra bars to the next system. And to relock the system, Command L. Okay, so Command L and Command Shift L will lock and unlock uh, your, your systems. And I'll, I'll get more into this when I talk about layout, but uh, I just wanted to point this out because um, this is sort of the, the very quick, easy way to, uh, to uh, make sure that you have the, the, the bars that you want on each system. Okay? Now, if you remember in the first video, I, I showed you a neat little trick with the, or, or I showed you the difference between uh, copying and pasting with stack selection versus non-stack selection, right? And if you remember, I had a non-stack non selected selection like this in a key, and I copied it into a, a, a key a, a step above, and it moved the notes, it transposed the notes for me, right? But if I had it uh, stack selected and I did the same thing, then the key signature would get um, copied over. The same thing exists in this in this uh, instance here. I'm going to just show you real quick. I've got the stack selected and I copy and paste. Right, it reverts to 4-4, four four, reverts to the old key, etc. If I have something non-stack selected and I were to do that, it will also work in 3-4, or, or it will work in a different meter, in this instance 3-4. But I do have to caution you that it, it comes with a caveat, and I'll explain what that is in a second. So I've got these four measures uh, selected, I'm going to put them here into these six measures of 3-4, and Finale will nicely uh, copy it. It gives you sort of this hemiola, right? It just copies quarter note for quarter note across these six bars, right? Really kind of handy at times. However, the caveat is this. If you have an instrument with empty bars, it doesn't work perfectly. You'll notice that the, they don't line up. This last measure doesn't line up anymore. I think the reason for that is because Finale is looking at this as, you know, it's saying it's seeing three empty bars in this passage, so it's giving you three empty bars in a different meter and then putting in the notes, which is not exactly correct, right? There is a way around this. You notice I've actually put in the rests in the tenor sax two part here. So if I do the same thing here, see now the rests all fill in and this bar lines up. So. I, you know, it's it's again, it's just it's one of those things. It's it's useful sometimes if you're careful. Um, there may be instances where you want to do something like that. So just just be aware that that uh, something like that the option exists for that, but you do have to be careful. All right. Now I want to take you through a few more of the options in the edit menu, and I think in the first video we made it all the way down to paste multiple. Right. Uh, the filter, uh, clear items. And the smart find and pay, I'm going to uh, talk about in, in one last video, the third video of this series. But I'm going to talk about uh, the rest of the, the stuff in that menu right here, right now. And the first of that would be move copy layers, right? So you'll see this passage here. I wrote my piano part. I've got uh, a layer one here in black and layer two in red. And then I move down to the left hand and I mistakenly entered, entered the left hand in layer two because I just forgot to change back. So there's an easy way to fix this. Just go to Edit, Move Copy Layers, and again, you can get there from the contextual menu, Move Copy Layers, and this window sh pops up, and you want to have Move selected, and what you're going to do is just Contents of Layer 2, check that box, into Layer 1, and hit OK, and it moves Layer 1, Layer 2 into Layer 1. And you can do some funky stuff. If you have this bar selected, see I've got 1, 2, and 3, layers here and we'll do the same thing move let's put contents of layer one into layer two let's put contents of layer two into layer three and layer three into one so you can have all these things checked and hit okay and now it just kind of moved all those layers around for me okay 
and copy layers. So if I have this bar selected and go to move copy layers and we check copy now, what I'm gonna do is co copy the contents of layer one into layer two. And what it will do is just that, you'll get a copy of the notes. Now this could be handy if you've got you know two instruments on one staff, for example, and you wanna show it like this, where you have uh, you know the unisons with two layers like that. Um, that's how you would do that. So you don't have to you know go through and write the whole passage twice. Just write it once and then copy from layer one to layer two. Easy enough. A couple more things in that edit menu. Uh, add measures will do exactly that and it will always add it to the end so uh, you've got page five here and if I do add measures let's say 16 hit OK and it'll add 16 measures to the end of the file all right so that's add measures um, the next thing is insert measure stack so if you have a bar selected and again you can get there from the contextual menu uh, insert measure stack it will do just that, and it'll ask you how many measures, one, and it will always put the measure that you're inserting before the measure you have selected, okay? So I've got that measure selected, and it gives me a measure uh, before. Easy enough, and of course you can insert as many as you need. Insert two measures, and done, all right? And then finally, uh, delete measure stack. If you have a measure stack selected, if you have a stack selection made, and you do, delete measure stack it'll disappear now this is sort of redundant because I showed you in the last video that if you have a, a measure stack selected all you need to do is hit delete and it will go away so but that's yet another way to do it it's also in the contextual menu many ways to do the same thing all right and then finally what else do we have in here ah the multi measure rests and the edit measure attributes uh, I'm gonna touch on multi measure rests when I talk about linked parts and I'm going to talk about edit measure attributes when I talk about the the measure tool down here okay but suffice it to say that both of those things um, exist in the contextual menu edit measure attributes and multi measure rests and also if you have a measure selected and you press what I just did there was press the return key it'll pull up that measure attributes as well right from the selection tool all right, uh, so that's that. Uh, come back for the third video. I'm going to talk about the, the very powerful uh, filter uh, that Finale has and also talk about clear items and the smart find and paint function that's in that exists in Finale. So come back for that uh, lesson, and um, I'll see you there. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.